Hello and welcome to my new video. Today I will be talking about research on two animal species published recently. Citations can be found in the comment section to this video. Both publications are available, available for free. Both publications are completely unrelated and the species analyzed are actually quite different. However, they do have a few things in common and so I thought I can combine results in one common video. What have lynx and seals, European lynx and Antarctic fur seal to be precise, in common? Well, both are large predators roaming considerable areas. Both are difficult to keep track unless coloring and both had been hunted almost to extinction and have been or are targets of considerable conservation efforts. Assessing population size and distribution is essential for conservation. How is it done given the secretive and migratory nature of these animals? In the case of the European lynx, researchers have started with tracking data of 450 individuals from 14 study sites in Europe. For the Antarctic fur seal, the starting point were closed survey data for one important breeding ground in South Georgia. In the case of seals, it is not trivial to conclude from breeding surveys to popu global population size, since a very large number of males and a considerable number of females are not breeding. So researchers used survey data from the past 90 years to develop a model connecting the number of certain groups, example given of breeding females, to global population size. Most of their publication is about building and validating this model. Here I will focus on their results in terms of population development. In the case of the European lynx, researchers were interested in habitat extension and in defining potential yet unoccupied habitats. They used tracking data to build up a habitat model, a model connecting environmental parameters like forest cover to suitability as a habitat for lynx. Again, most of the publication was about building and validating this model and again I will focus on the actual results regarding potential habitats in Europe. This map shows the current distribution of the European lynx according to tracking and other data. Lynx had been completely extinct in Central and Southern Europe and as you can see, their habitats are still very patchy. Fragmented habitats result in very low numbers of potential sexual, par sexual partners, which is problematic for building up stable populations. Therefore, researchers were mainly interested whether there are suitable habitats allowing connections between the fragmented patches. As you can see here, there are. There is a pretty high number of places in Europe where lynx might become, become established in the future and there are a number of places where such establishment would be beneficial for the lynx population in general. After this rather optimistic tale about the European lynx, let's have a look at the Atlantic fur seal. First, a very rough distribution map. This is not from the paper, but rather a combination of some infos from the paper and some infos from Wikipedia. Seals are occurring in the waters surrounding Antarctica with a notable gap south of the Pacific Ocean. They are using small islands as their breeding grounds with South Georgia here being by far the most important place. The survey data used in the publication have been obtained at one breeding ground from South Georgia. This is a very rough sketch of population development combining information from the paper and from other sources. I have to say that I am pretty unsure about it, therefore I use the thick blurry line which sometimes should be even thicker. So let's start in about 1790 when seals were first discovered and culling started. Back then there were several millions of seals around which were slaughtered to virtual extinction in only a few decades. The seal fur business collapsed and seals were not observed for quite some time. Recovery of seal population started sometime after 1900 with strict protection laws. Recovery has been a success story up to very recently and in the 1990s global seal population reached numbers of about 3 millions according to the cited publication. But starting in about 2005, a serious decline of seal population is observed. This decline, according to the authors, is mainly due to the decline in the main food of seals, krill, which in turn is due to climate change. The authors more or less excluded commercial krill extraction in the southern oceans as a cause but added that this factor might also become important in the future. Taken together, the seal story provides a cautionary highlight on successful conservation work of past decades and gives a warning sign about the effects of climate change in this regard. 
It documents how fast seemingly stable, seemingly stable populations can break down and that climate change indeed will have severe effects on what we take as wildlife today.